first of all, a bit about what I'm doing and why I'm doing Polly for the, uh, the Comfort Challenge. I think it goes without saying, she's um, a, a great comfort to me and my family, um, like all pets are. And I don't know if it's anything like your house at the moment, but because we're not supposed to hug each other and stuff like that, uh, it's just resulting in a lot of extra pat, patting and, and attention duties for the dogs. <laughs> So well done to the dogs keeping us all together over this period of time. Okay, so canvas preparation. Uh, the first thing I did was gesso uh, the canvas and then sand it back. Uh, after I had done that, I put on an even more excessive amount of gesso, just a really thick, goopy kind of layer. And then I laid uh, tin foil, owl foil, what do you want to call this stuff? Aluminium foil? You know, anyway, I laid that over it and then I peeled it back uh, and I let it because it came up with quite sort of uh, pointy little peaks and ridges which were a little bit scratchy looking. But as it, because it's so thick, as it sits over time, that softens. Anyway, so <clears throat> I did all that because I was trying to develop an interesting texture for the rug because I'm not painting that rug. I'm sorry. It looks great and all, it's just um, I don't have the time and the patience to do that. So then I thought, um, okay, I've got that all over the entire thing. It would look better if she wasn't entirely on the rug. So I changed the composition, but I've still got this texture that I'm going to have to fight in a couple of different ways. Sketched in a rug and a dog. It's definitely not dog shaped. Um, I've got some brushes and some solvent. Solvent. I've got some that's and I'm going to be using some number tool medium for extra quick drying time. And that's my palette. So I've got a buff cream, white, more white, a bit, bit of burnt sienna with white that I scrapped off another Kiko palette. Um, raw umber, vermilion, bizarre mauve color. Uh, that's a dark in purple, and that's paint gray. Actually, no, one more colour. It's a transparent yellow. Can I do it with those colours? So part of the reason that I've chosen um, dioxazine purple, um, even though that colour isn't really apparent in the photograph, is because it's a comfort challenge and my mum's favourite colour is dioxazine purple. So I'm going to do Polly's teddy bear in dioxazine purple because as you can see it's brown. And that's not really that attractive. The other thing I've done with my limit in uh, colour choices for my palette is I have um, deliberately chosen colours that I think will appeal to my mum. I need a gift and Polly is her dog and I'm hoping to create a nice likeness that will give her some comfort. I did tell you this goes for a really long time, didn't I? Like a really, really long time. I think in all I, I spent about three or four hours on this painting. So the thing about Polly is that she's really, really fluffy um, uh, and she's a light coloured dog but she's got heaps and heaps of um, fluff. So to show exactly how fluffy she is, um, I need to get a really solid, like a lot of fluff on and then put the shadow over the major fluff and then come back in with detail last. Oh, she's so fluffy. <laughs> Don't get attached to any detail you see me doing or, you know, I'm faking it. I'm not really ready for detail yet. All I'm doing is putting things roughly where I think I can see them for the time being, and that can change like that, you know. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm building up the texture in the fur, and to do that, it'll look like I'm painting her face, and then I'll, it'll look like I'm unpainting her face probably three or four times. So don't get attached to any detail that you see.
So I don't quite know how um, Polly got the tail in the position that it's in in this painting because it seems to be growing out of her other far leg. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to look more normal because it just doesn't suit the composition. Um, so uh, I'm going to make a bad decision. Ooh, sorry. Now instead of later because later on it will be difficult to change and at the moment everything's wet so it's very easy. So now I'm correcting the composition, or trying to, because the tail was just like, what? Um, but what I've done is I've created a tail that sticks directly up in the air. Or is it laying on the, on that? We don't know. Um, and it's really um, hard for me to make decisions like that sometimes. So with this thing, it just looks ridiculous for ages. And I'm, I'm going to apologize in advance for that. But I kind of will work with the area that I'm comfortable where I know what I'm doing and if I have something I don't know what I'm doing in yet, I'll leave that to last. So the poor old tail looks ridiculous. It's like, is it lying on the mat or is it sticking straight up in the air? Who knows? Well, guess what? I haven't decided yet. Anytime you see detail coming in, especially in these early phases, abandon Hobie who enter, it's not going to stay. Um, what I'm doing is I'm building up the different tones of the fur, which means I'll put lots of dark on Polly's face and then I'll almost rub it all out and then I'll put a little bit more on and more and more until I get, you know, the fur looking like I want it to. Now I'm, <laughs> I'm painting a cherry red floor and I am loving it. <laughs> that color is so great. Um, so yeah, so that weird texture that I built up with the gesso, um, I'm now using, treating it one way for the uh, fabric to make the fabric look like it's made from something different than the timber. Um, and I'm, I think I'm getting there. If you were to really examine uh, the canvas, the texture on the canvas, you see that it is just identical throughout, but if I can fight that and make the timber look like it's a different type of material than the, the silk scarf, then winning. It's looking like this is just going to go on for probably 15 minutes altogether. Uh, which I'm not really happy about, but I did promise that I would share start to finish um, a whole painting, so I guess um, I may as well get it out the way now. Um, please let me know if you want to see more videos like this, and please let me know if you don't, because I'm perfectly happy <laughs> just painting <laughs> without all the camera equipment around, because it's really awkward. <laughs> The trouble with detail and oil painting is that I, I kind of have to um, do a little bit and then leave it for a day and then do a bit more. So there's a lot of back and forward in different sessions. And that's why these little time lapse sessions are all quite separate looking, is because they were done um, on different days. And now I'm getting serious about the face and I'm working on kind of getting her features and her look in. Um, and I, I want this photo, this painting to be like painterly. I, I want it, the paint to be visible. I don't want it to be, you know, um, I want it to be soft and squishy looking, basically like Polly is. But I do want to have it looking like her and not like some other dog. Because Polly is such a light white and apricot colour, um, 
I've got to really make sure that my contrasting fur, the shadows underneath the bits of fur are dark enough. And it's scary because you put these really dark marks on a dog that you know is actually light coloured and it just looks a bit weird. But the only way to do it is kind of do it and then paint the white back over the top. You know, you want the shadow to be underneath the object, not on top of the object. Um, but yeah. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Um, I hope that you're getting some kind of education or something out of watching me paint. Even if it is just learning that, um, yeah, we all make mistakes. <laughs> Some of us make lots of them and string them together and then when they're finished fixing them as best they can, that's what we call a painting. We're gradually improving the technology that we have around the um, studio. Um, so lighting's improving over time, our camera stands have arrived at long last. Uh, here I was fighting a, a massive shadow from the uh, music stand that I'm using to balance the camera. So that was an issue for me. And then because I've had to have the light on to hide the shadow, you've got the big white shiny bits. Hopefully we're going to get this resolved before the next big day. So it's still not 100% finished, 